In this lecture, we'll be looking at one technique for cluster analysis and the technique is called k-means clustering. Let's first take a look at what cluster analysis is all about. So now I'm going to give you an example just to give you an intuitive understanding of what we mean by cluster analysis. Take a look at this figure and when you look at this figure and you want to describe it, how might you describe it? One way to describe it is of course to describe the individual objects in it. The other way to describe it might be to simply say that this picture consists of a set of ovals and a set of diamonds. right? Or some other people might see it differently. They may see you've got some smooth objects like the ovals and the circles and some sharp objects like the diamonds. Okay. So essentially what we try to do is when we get a set of many things we want to simplify that and describe it in a simpler way by identifying smaller subsets of related things. That really is cluster analysis. So to make things a little more explicit what we could say is that we are given a set of objects we want to divide them up into some number of clusters here in this example I'm saying three clusters so and what we want to do is to put some objects into each of these clusters in such a way that the cases or objects within the cluster are closer to each other than cases from other clusters. By closer to each other we mean they are more similar to each other like in the case of the circles and the diamonds. right? The, all the circles are more similar to each other than the diamonds are and all the diamonds are more similar to each other than they are to circles. That's really what we are trying to do here. Of course, once again to emphasize, the reason we try to cluster objects is that we want to reduce the complexity, right? So it's easier to talk in terms of three clusters than it is to talk in terms of a thousand different objects, right? Because you're saying, okay, it's hard for me to deal with thousand objects, but if you tell me that this basically consists of three sets of objects which are all quite similar to each other, then I can think of the thousand just by thinking about the three, okay? So we are trying to reduce complexity. But there's a trade-off, right? On the one hand, you want to reduce complexity. But on the other hand, you also want to retain diversity, right? That is, if you just say, well, I'm going to view all of the thousand objects as just one set, right? Then you're missing out the diversity that exists in those objects. After all, you want to capture the fact that there are different types of objects. But at the same time, you don't want to get overwhelmed by the large number of objects that you have within you. Okay, so this is the basic challenge in cluster analysis. You want to reduce the complexity, but also reflect the diversity. In other words, I want to see the thousand objects just as three representative clusters, but I want these three clusters to reflect some amount or good deal of the diversity that exists in the thousand objects. Okay, so when you create a set of clusters, the complexity reflects how many objects you have, right? So for example, you've got, let's say a thousand objects, that is complexity, right? It's complex to think in terms of a thousand objects, okay? So complexity is related to the number of objects and diversity is related to how much variability there exists within this set of objects that we have, right? So you've got objects which are all, uh, many of which are quite different from each other, that is diversity, which reflects the variability. Take a concrete example. So I'm taking a small data set consisting of 12 uh, uh, data about 12 students. And of course, we've got the age and the height expressed in some, uh, you know, some units. Okay. So we can uh, have the 12 data items. All of them are here. And I compute the mean of the age and the mean of the height. Okay. So it is possible to represent this entire set by just the mean age and the mean height. So instead of thinking of 12 objects, I can just say, I've got a set of 12 objects whose mean age is 11.39 and mean height is 61.31, right? So if I represent this whole set simply by its mean, what we achieve is a factor of 12 in complexity reduction, right? We started with 12 objects. We are now saying, well, they're all represented by just one object with mean so much and me, uh, with mean age so much and mean height so much. Okay, that's a factor of 12 complexity reduction. But how much of the variety 
of the original set does this retain? Right. Obviously, it's clear that all variety is lost. Nothing is retained because you're saying there is no variety. I'm going to see this just as a homogeneous group with the age of 11.39 and height of 61.31. That's it. Right. I completely lost variety. So therefore, variety retention is zero, but complexity reduction is huge. So representing the entire cluster by just uh, the entire data set by just a single cluster based on the mean of the values gives us a tremendous reduction in complexity but zero retention of variety. The other extreme would be to represent each case as its own cluster. In other words, I've got a data set consisting of 12 rows in this case and I'm saying each row is its own cluster. Right. So in this case, of course, variety retention is perfect. Okay. That is because if you look at the clusters that we have created, the 12 clusters, all of the variety that existed in the original data set in terms of, you know, different heights and different ages, all the vari variability within heights and ages, all of that variability is retained when you just consider each case as its own cluster. So therefore, there is perfect variety retention. However, what about complexity reduction? Complexity reduction is zero because we had 12 cases that we had to deal with. You're trying to simplify it. So you would have achieved some simplicity if you, if I could say, well, don't think of 12, just think of a smaller number. But we're not doing that. We're creating 12 clusters. So complexity reduction in this case is zero. Okay. So those represent the two extremes in cluster analysis. One is to view the entire set as one cluster. And the other extreme is to view each case as its own cluster. Neither of these is useful, although each of them does a perfect job in either variety or complexity reduction. So obviously, cluster analysis means finding some nice middle path, which will help us to reduce complexity by quite a bit and retain a good deal of the variety. It cannot retain all the variety. And of course, it cannot achieve a complete reduction in complexity. So we are looking for a middle path. Okay, at this point, we have a good idea of what cluster analysis is all about and what it's trying to achieve. Let's take a concrete example. Okay, so first of all, one of the things we are talking about, harping about, is that in the, inside a cluster, all the cases are very similar to each other. And we are trying to say, we want to retain as much of the variability in the original data as possible, right? So what do you mean by variability? How do you measure it? That's what we're looking at here. So again, we take our data set, consists of data about 12 students, the ages and the heights. And for each, and of course, we have computed the mean age and the mean height. For each case, we calculate the square of the difference of age and the mean age. Why square? Because some of the differences will be positive, some of the differences will be negative. We don't want them to cancel out. So this is a common technique that is used in statistics. Uh, statistics is to square these values. Okay. And of course, there are other reasons why people consider squares. We won't get into that now. Okay. So that's what has been calculated here. So to take the first number 6.21, how did we get 6.21? Well, 11.39 minus 8.9 is about 2.5. Okay. And square that, you get close to 6.21 because 2.5, the whole square is 6.25. Of course, this is slightly less than 2.5 and therefore you get 6.21. This is how it's been calculated. So we've done that for all the ages. We've done the same for all the heights. Okay. And then we have simply added up the sum of the squares. Okay. 6.21 plus 55.5 is 61.71. Okay. So the total you get now is 806.9.8. Uh, and that represents, that is a numerical uh, re representation of the total amount of variability that exists within the data set. Okay. Why do we say this is a measure of variability? No, just think of it. If all the ages had been the same, let's say all the ages had been 10 and all the heights had been the same, let's say they were all 56. Right. So everybody had age 10 and everybody had uh, height uh, 56. Okay. In that case, what is the variability in the data? Clearly, all of them have the same age. All of them have the same height. There is no variability. They're all the same. Okay. There is no variety. And therefore, if you had that, then you expect that this sum would be zero. 
right? Because after all, the mean would be the same as all of them. So you take age minus mean, it's going to be zero for everyone. Height minus mean is going to be zero for everyone. So overall variability will be zero, okay? So clearly the higher this number is, the more variability there exists within the data set, okay? So this is the variability that we want to retain when we break, a, break down a data set into clusters.